The Battle of Turnham Green occurred on 13 November 1642 near the village of Turnham Green, at the end of the first campaigning season of the First English Civil War. The battle resulted in a standoff between the forces of King Charles I and the much larger parliamentarian army under the command of the Earl of Essex. In blocking the Royalist Army's way to London, however, the parliamentarians gained an important strategic victory as the standoff forced Charles and his army to retreat to Oxford for secure winter quarters. <laughs> Prelude After the Battle of Edgehill, the 23rd of October, King Charles captured Banbury, the 27th of October, and was greeted by cheering crowds as he arrived in Oxford on the 29th of October. Charles's nephew and cavalry commander, Prince Rupert of the Rhine, swept down the Thames Valley, capturing Abingdon, Aylesbury, and Maidenhead, from where he attempted to capture Windsor, although he failed in that attempt because of parliamentary strength there. After this, many officers wanted to open peace negotiations, contrary to Rupert's desire to carry on to London, but the King agreed with the officers, and so the Earl of Essex managed to overtake them and reach London with his parliamentary army by 8 November. On 12 November, Rupert, with a large cavalry detachment, stormed Brentford and then proceeded to sack the town. This action encouraged those Londoners who feared for the property to side with the parliamentarians. On 13 November, Essex's army, with the London trainbands and other London citizenry, assembled as an army of about 24,000 on Chelsea Field. They advanced along the Great West Road to Turnham Green, in the vicinity of the main body of the Royalist Army. <laughs> <laughs> Battle The Royalist Army numbered around 13,000 and was commanded by Patrick Riven, 1st Earl of Forth, with King Charles also present during the battle. The Parliamentarian Army was commanded by Robert Devereux, 3rd Earl of Essex and was 24,000 strong, including many poorly trained Londoners. The two armies formed lines running roughly north south, with the parliamentary line slightly longer than the Royalist one. The Royalist army was significantly outnumbered and short of ammunition, so was reluctant to attack. The king was also advised that to engage such an oddly assorted army containing what was obviously a large contingent of armed civilians, namely the trained bands under Philip Skippen, would not endear him to London, and it was too early in the war for the royalists to contemplate taking London without the support of a sizable part of its population. The parliamentarians were seeking only to block the royalist route to London, so they had no need to attack either. With the end of the campaigning season close at hand, Charles decided not to press the issue and withdrew after a slight cannonade. Casualties on both sides were light, with fewer than 50 killed in total. The parliamentarians secured the battlefield without fully engaging, which was probably fortunate for them, as many of their number had never seen a battle before and were not used to army discipline formations and deployments. John Hampton urged the Earl of Essex to turn both flanks of the Royal Army via Acton and Kingston. Experienced professional soldiers, however, urged Essex not to trust the London men to hold their ground, while his other troops manoeuvred. Hampton's advice was undoubtedly premature. A Battle of Worcester 1651 was not within the power of the parliamentarians of 1642. In Napoleon's words, one only manoeuvres around a fixed point, and the city levies at that time were certainly not, vis a vis Rupert's cavalry, a fixed point. <laughs> Aftermath Charles, once more contrary to Rupert's advice, retreated back up the Thames Valley towards Oxford, losing the possible chance for a flanking movement through Loyal Kent, where he set up his headquarters for the rest of the war. Never again during the Civil War would the Royalists come as close to capturing London, and without London they could not win the war. Topic: Site today. 
The site of the battle was then open fields, but is now urbanised, forming part of the Chiswick area of London. Most of the Turnham Green itself has been lost, with only a small park retaining the name. The Great West Road still runs on almost the same alignment. The parliamentary forces were deployed in a line running south from the location of the present day Turnham Green Station to the grounds of Chiswick House, which had been built in c. 1610. The current house was built in the 1720s on the same site. The slightly shorter Royalist line started just south of today's Chiswick Park Station and extended southwards to the Great West Road equals equals notes